Hello guys, Peters here and today we're gonna talk about Unwaking Waters. This is one of the few missions where you can actually play in a 16 player group and in this aspect Vizuna Square and Unwaking share many similarities. The task is simple to destroy Kunavang. Uh, by the way, uh, she has master skills, she can deal like 300 damage with Dark Chain Lightning, she can cause HP degen with the Corrupted Dragon skills, she has some self heal, she is immune to knockdowns and more. To get credit for the bonus we must finish the mission in less than 15 minutes and this is a lot more than what you will need, usually people finish it in 2 or 3 minutes. So we have a Karzik and the Luxon side of this mission, it means if you want you can beat this with 14 heroes and 2 players, just bring a friend, sink in and hope no one else gets in the way. And this would have been way too easy for me to make a guide like this. So here's what I did, I made a team build which can beat this mission in hard mode with henchman 2. But first thing first, there are two ways of completing unmaking motors. The slow way goes like this, gate opens, you kill the first group, attack Kunawang, she escapes and you continue chasing her down this big blue twisted area. This is also an option, but it takes too long, so I would recommend doing the shortcut and bringing as many ranged and coaster damage as possible. Sorry Willis, you are screwed here big time, so if your team's DPS is great you can weaken Kunawang so much that you can skip all the chasing part and get the cutscene immediately. This way the mission takes only 2 minutes even less. Now some thoughts of the henchmen and their build, obviously if you start the mission from the Kursik side you get the Luxon henches, if you start it from the Luxon side you get the Kursik henchmen. I'm only telling you this to check their builds, some of them might have skills which were great with your own hero team, some might be a copy of one skill, like uh, Azen has uh, Sinato Spirits and if you bring an SOS read, they will not really work efficiently together. So my first tip, if you are having troubles with this mission, check the henchman's build and modify your own build as needed. Tip number 2, if you do this only for dailization coins, you better start from the Kursik side. Why? Look at the two teams, the upper one has 3 rangers and only 1 melee, even an SOS read and 2 LAs. The bottom one has only 1 ranger but 2 melees. Like I said melees can't help much against Kuna, so guys always start the mission from the Kursik side if you can. Now the time has come to reveal my secret OP build which works for any of the non-ranged professions even for assassins, warriors and dervishes. Voila, the bestest build of all. No, I'm joking guys, this is far from the best, but it does a decent job. So the trick about sub 2 minute runs is to provide as many physical damage dealers as you can. Get a longbow or flatbow, bring a read the wind, or even other preparations, get drunken master, ebon battle standard of honor to boost the whole party's damage output and use the ebon vanguard assassin support. Basically you need only one skill to do enough damage on Kunavang and it's called barbs. A very underrated necro skill in my opinion, which triggers and deals like 14 damage every time the target receives physical damage. Now imagine you choose the Luxton Hatches, this is 3 rangers already, and then your own char has a bow and the Ebon Assassin, that's 5 physical damage dealers so far. How can we further increase Barb's usefulness? What do you think? Minions obviously, and ranged minions, so bone fiends for the win. So here is my team composition. Two research mesmers, but this time you should add an aurism to one of your mesmers so they won't drain all of Kunavan's energy. A side note if Fu's energy reaches zero, research does no damage at all. My next hero is a Senator Spirits hybrid, and I will start from the Luxon side to have an even bigger handicap against Kunavang, so no Ritu henchman for me, and I thought Nessos would help with the damage. A Soul Twisting Ritualist, but with the Brutal Weapon, is my next and this will increase your character's damage nicely, you will see even with auto attacks you can do like 50s or 70s. The next hero is our bread and butter, a Curses blood magic hybrid, barbs will do hundreds of damage on Kunawang, spoil victor and inside this parasite will do like 130 each time the boss attacks, so this one hero will out damage everyone. Just out of curiosity, take a look guys, this is something the necro hero would see when barbs and the other two hexes start working. The next hero is an order of Andes minion master and finally we have a beep necro. Now let's see how the team performs in action. After entering the mission we get a countdown message, 
if no one from either side hits enter mission during this period, you get henchmen. To be honest, the waiting phase takes longer than the mission itself. Finally, when the gate opens, I like to micromanage my asteroid and use displacement, shelter, union and armor farm feeling, even brutal weapon. After that you may grow and destroy the afflicted elementalists and monks first. Once the area is clear you can even wait a bit so your minion masters make a bigger army or simply go to Kunavang and give her your best shot. Advice to wait up your minions and place the ebon ward where they stand auto attack with your bow, use the Ebon Assassin too and make sure the Barb's Necro is doing its job. After around 25 seconds you will get the cutscene, skip it and do the same as before. So guys this is it, you don't even need a good build, just great heroes and you can do Unwaking Waters. I will put the builds into the description, you can copy pasta from there. Thanks for watching and see you next time.